Hi, welcome to Chartwise Women. I'm Mary Ellen McGonigal here with Erin Swenlin, and we are continuing to celebrate Women's History Month. And today we have a special, we're going to be talking about the importance of knowing your history, whether it's knowing historical precedents as it relates to the stock market and yourself as far as your behaviors in investing. History does play a lot and a huge role in our lives in many ways. And so when we talk, for instance, about reading charts and technical analysis, that technical analysis is based primarily on historical precedent. What has that particular stock, the markets, what has it historically done given a certain situation? And then from there, how has the stock price been behaving on that chart? So again, uh, using history as your guide can be is very, very powerful when you are investing. Today, we are going to be digging deeper into that as it relates to the history of the markets and the history of women and their role in the markets. And yeah, let's just take a quick moment here and talk about historical precedent a bit further. We'll dive in here. It's a big part of my work. It's using history to guide you as far as making judgments or decisions on the current market environment. So what I'm sharing with you here is a weekly price chart of the NASDAQ composite. And what I am sharing with you is the bottoming process coming out of a bear market. As many of you may know, the NASDAQ did hit bear market status recently. And we want to know what to be on the lookout for using historical precedents to tell us that the markets have potentially bottomed. So on this weekly chart, I'm able to share with you coming out of both the 2018 and the 2020 bear markets, what did that NASDAQ look like? What were some of the signals that we were able to tell us that the markets have bottomed? So we'll start here quickly with this coming out of that 2018 bear market. The markets did reverse in early January. And our first signal is using this fast moving stochastics signal. And it did begin to turn upward on that weekly chart. That was our first signal that this bottoming process had potentially ended. Now, we did get a little bit of a head fake there, but let's go ahead up here and take a look at some of the other signals that really told us that this particular turnaround was, in fact, the real deal. First up here is an RSI, your relative strength indicator. And unlike that head fake period, we did get the RSI trending and going above this net neutral 50 simultaneously with that reversal on the stochastics. And coming out of that bear market 2020, very similar dynamics, stochastics turning upward. And then we can marry that with an RSI that turned positive on the weekly. And then in this case, I'm sharing with you currently, this is taking us into the beginning of March that we are not quite there yet. Still more work to do. Let's go ahead and take a quick look here at the S&P 500, a similar uh, journey, if you will. However, in this case, we are looking at a daily price chart as a possible signal for what to be on the lookout for. I'm taking us back to coming out of that 2019 bear market and on a daily chart, what to be on the lookout for. Again, those stochastics faster moving broke back above 50. So we're needing more confirmation than just turning positive. And then we can marry that with the index breaking back above these shorter term moving averages with an RSI that is trending upward. I do have an even more thorough process where I'm looking for what's called a follow through day, but certainly for the charts and this purpose, it's very helpful here to use historical precedents as your guide. And so from here, let's go ahead and take a look at another index that's really being closely watched at this point in time. And that is the VIX, the volatility index. Again, we want to use history. Volatility, when it's high, it's telling you that fear levels among investors is high. And oftentimes when we see that volatility index spike, 
you will see a decline in the market. So this is taking us looking at the daily chart of the volatility index. And many of you may know the beginning, actually, the uh, probably around January 10th on the markets did deteriorate as this volatility index was rising. So you really want to be aware of that using historical precedents relative to where the markets were as that volatility is increasing. So if we go now to this current period, February into March, we can see volatility on the rise. On this particular day, it did close above 30, and that's really super high. You want to be aware of that because it's not a good time to be putting money to work. Again, using historical precedence, this weekly chart of that volatility index will be even more telling in the sense that it is using precedence, telling you really how high it is. The volatility index usually trades at around, on average, 12, but it will reside in that 15 level. So to be up double that is not a good sign. And now I wanted to share with you a using historical precedence with an actual individual stock. So we are looking here at a daily price chart of Tesla. I know everyone is quite familiar with this, but we're going to, again, use historical precedent as far as when a stock has entered into an uptrend. And really, I like to say that each stock tends to have its own personality, if you will. So you, looking at the stock historically can really be quite helpful. I'm taking us back to fall of 2021. And the stock came in and reported their earnings. This is a big driver of a stock's upward movement if they come in with strong numbers. And we can see the parabolic move. There were other announcements in here as well relating to positive growth within the company and a stock split. So this really had the stock taking off. And more recently, we want to take a look at the current position of that stock. Are we exhibiting any of these similar characteristics where the stock gaps up heavy volume, remains in an uptrend, your outside RSI, and moving average convergence divergence MACD are both in an uptrend. And at this point in time, we can see that that moving average MACD is trending upward, but it's still below that net neutral zero. So we are not in a bullish position there. And then that relative strength RSI indicator, it has continually tried to turn positive on this daily chart, has been denied. And then, of course, you want to take into account the overall market as well. But this is how you can use precedence to help you guide in your investment decisions, again, by using history as your guide. Erin? Yes, it's been uh, very interesting to see our history just as far as the two of us, of course, getting into this business, but really looking in and finding out you know, where this all came from, as you talked about historical presidents, but in specifically as far as uh, women and how the market has affected women as far as getting involved in it. Uh, it's it's always been a challenge. I know it's been a challenge for me. But one of the things you really want to pay attention to is to know yourself. We're talking about knowing history. You need to know yourself. And that means not just, oh, how do I feel today or, or that kind of thing. It's knowing yourself as far as your investing. So you need to know what your risk profile is. How much money are you okay um, risking? More than likely, you know, if you use your technical analysis, you'll you'll make some money with that. But you need to know that, you know, I'm not interested in getting into a very volatile stock, for example. And then also your trade history. It's really important. I often talk about it, how you really should keep a journal so that you can see the history of your trades and see where you maybe didn't do the right thing, and then also pat yourself on the back for when you did do the right thing. So I think that's really important to know yourself, your risk profile, what you do when you're in the midst of investing, but particularly understanding that risk profile and keeping your own little trade history, if you will. And talking about history, it's also important to understand the evolution of the stock market and especially how it pertains to women's involvement. We talked about in our last special earlier this month about how women take less risk and are less involved in the stock market, yet we tend to be a little bit more successful at investing. Uh, 
if we look at history, we can always see ways in which society has actively kept women away from the stock market. But at this point, we are hoping to get everyone more involved as far as the female population, but also everybody needs to be involved in the market. Stock Charts TV sat down with George Robb, professor of history at William Patterson, about the early days of women in Wall Street. A uh, really great video, enjoy. Betty Green was the most successful woman on Wall Street during the Gilded Age. She was a fearless speculator and made millions in the market by buying at times of financial panic. Since her death in 1916, she's been remembered as the witch of Wall Street, or even like many early women financiers, she may not be remembered at all. Very little information uh, has survived about women in Wall Street in the early years. Um, Business corporations, for the most part, don't preserve shareholder records, but also because there were such negative attitudes towards women investors, a lot of women who uh, were involved in Wall Street just didn't advertise this fact or um, were quiet about it. That's George Robb, professor of history at William Patterson University. He wrote a book about this subject called Ladies of the Ticker, Women and Wall Street from the Gilded Age to the Great Depression. He explains what the public perception of the early days of the stock market was. The early years of Wall Street, many Americans thought of the stock market as an uh, immoral place. Christians were taught that you should work for your money, so people thought it was sinful to make money on the rise and fall of shares. Wall Street was also seen as a dangerous place. There were frequent financial crises which caused people to lose their money or were blamed for depressions. And this is exactly why it was thought that women shouldn't be involved with Wall Street. Women were actively discouraged from investing in the stock market. They were told it was too dangerous. Um, it was also believed that women were too emotional to deal with the sudden rise and fall in shares. They should entrust their money to a male uh, advisor or trustees. And uh, brokers were also had a reputation for being hyper-masculine and aggressive. But Wall Street was also thought to be a sexually dangerous place for women. And the media did their best to contribute to keeping women away from Wall Street. The early media image of women who were associated with the stock market was very negative. And so, for example, many novels uh, that were written in the 19th century depicted women investors as being uh, emotionally unhinged or even um, sexually immoral. And stockbrokers were often depicted as uh, predators. And so the plots of these novels depicted women losing their money or losing their virtue. Uh, and so they, this was a way in which um, society was just warning women away or telling them that this was a dangerous place. But why all this effort to keep women away from the stock market? I think part of the reason that the media and the um, financial establishment were trying to keep women away from the stock market because men were trying to preserve to themselves an important um, way of making money, uh, but also they were trying to uphold uh, sexual divisions between what was appropriate for men and what was appropriate for women. Though despite all this, being able to invest in the stock market was important for financial independence for women. For middle-class women, the stock market was a very important way that they could make money. Uh, there were a lot of avenues of uh, employment that were closed to women. Women, for the most part, couldn't become professionals. Most women in the 19th century didn't have enough capital to uh, open their own businesses. So if you had a small inheritance and you invested that in stocks and bonds, you could make a steady uh, income that way. Even though investments were important to women's independence, Women stock market investors weren't supposed to exist, but they did. Victoria Woodhull was the first American women stock broker. She opened a brokerage business in New York City in 1870, and she attracted a lot of women customers. Uh, at first, the male brokers treated her as a kind of curiosity or an oddity, uh, but over time, they became very hostile to her. They didn't like the competition that she was giving, but also she um, 
exposed corruption on the part of mail brokers. She opened a newspaper in which she publicized uh, stock frauds. And she also had a kind of a feminist attitude that the reason Wall Street was so corrupt was because it was dominated by men. You needed more women brokers. If you had more women on Wall Street, Wall Street would be a more honest place. And uh, the men didn't want to hear that. And remember Hetty Green from earlier? Hetty Green was the most successful women financier in America. Uh, she was often called the Queen of Wall Street. From the 1880s to the 1910s, she was the richest woman in America. She made a vast fortune through investments in railroads and uh, real estate. But she also had her detractors who called her the Witch of Wall Street. And they argued that the only reason she succeeded is because she was like a man, that she had a powerful masculine brain. She was ruthless and aggressive in the way that male brokers were and that women should have nurturing qualities. They shouldn't have these kinds of personal ambitions. To align themselves with the societal ideals of what a woman should be, some women took a different approach. Ella Rawls Reader was a company promoter from Alabama in the early 20th century. And she went to great lengths to make herself uh, acceptable to the public and to contrast herself with someone like Hetty Green, who had such a bad reputation. So um, Ella Rolls Reader um, presented herself in an ultra feminine way. She would dress fashionably in white lacy dresses and uh, wear long white gloves. And she would talk about the fact that she had no personal ambition. She didn't want to get rich herself. She was only in uh, the financial business to help her family or to help other people. And even though Wall Street was dominated by white society, there were still examples of black women who were investing. Most women investors um, in the stock market in the 19th century were white women. It's difficult to find information about black women investors, but um, there were some interesting examples. For example, uh, Mary Ellen Pleasant uh, was a black woman who moved to California during the gold rush, and she made a lot of money operating boarding houses. And then she invested that in government bonds and bank stock and became a very wealthy woman doing so. I think it's important for us to understand the history of women in Wall Street, because Wall Street is a part of our economy where women are still struggling for parity where uh, men still dominate uh, this financial sector. And I think if we better understand the kind of uh, prejudices that have hindered women, women are, would be in a better position today to, um, to achieve equality and to um, make their mark on Wall Street. Well, that was an excellent video talking all about the early days of the stock market. Things certainly are quite a bit different here than they were in the 19th century, but we do have room to grow as it relates to equality, get more women up there in the executive suites. We are going to take this theme a step further. And we hope you'll join us in our next show where we have a panel discussion with two very successful female traders, Linda Ratchke and Danielle Shea. And we are going to be talking about their histories. We're also going to be talking about market analysis and how we all got started, who are, are our mentors and why representation matters. We hope to see you there. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.